What did the tectonic plate say when it bumped into another tectonic plate? <laughs> Sorry, that's my fault. Let me get the pink sheet. Hey. Um, mom says that about one to two weeks ago, she was reluctant to jump on the sofa, go on walks, or step over thresholds. I said, how do you think she's doing now? She says she's walking fine, um, doesn't seem to be getting worse. She's getting better, and she seems like she's pretty much back to herself. But mom said she just brought her in to make sure that there's no underlying causes for Okey what dokey. happened. So let's go see Sophia. We're already in the back. Hey, cutie. That's Olive. <laughs> Hello. Okie dokie. Go in your house. Thank you very much. Woke up early this morning. So I'm going to go get some of my, my minutes in. I accidentally slept with my watch on. But like I got up at like 5.30. I'm like, okay, I'm going to plug in my watch. And that's 30. When the lights come up, I'll go to the tennis court. Not actually hit balls, but like run around as if I'm playing. The plug wasn't plugged into the wall when I put it on, so I actually struggled, struggled with that. I'm like, like, well, I'm not getting any credit for this. Should I go home? But I'm like, oh, I'm getting something out of it. I am calling Sophia. Her neuro exam is basically normal. Her knees are a little crunchy. Maybe when I palpated her back, she stopped panting but no overt pain so i think it makes complete sense if you know she's markedly better i think we just are going to need to do strict 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 rest that's going to be our recommendation unless mom tells us something very different she wasn't jumping up and down the couch up and down the bed you know and then just she was just she went from a little happy puppy to this like old sad dog she's beginning to do better She's actually jumping down from the furniture. Back problems can be caused by a couple different things. Back problems can be caused by a slipped disc, which is the most common thing that we see. Dogs right. can also get things like meningitis and spinal infections and tumors of the spinal cord that can cause similar symptoms, all which are much, much, much less likely. Dogs with back problems we, we sort of grade the severity of their symptoms on a scale of one to five, with five being the most severe. Category one is when they're just painful. Category two is a dog that can walk but is wobbly. Category three is a dog that cannot walk but can still move the legs. Category four is a dog that cannot move the legs. And category five cannot even feel the legs. Where, where Sophia is right now is, is a category one assuming that this is a back problem. So when, when they're exclusively showing signs of back pain, not showing wobbliness or difficulty walking, and when it's their first time, and when symptoms are getting better, the recommendation would be to do exactly what Dr. Cuevas did. Medications, but the one thing that I would add to the medications would be strict, strict rest. So when I see things like we were on medications but we would still jump off of the couch or some days were good and some days were, you know, we're, we're, we're wanting to jump off of things. The reason that I get worried about that is that if this is a slipped disc, right now she's a category one but sort of jumping off of things can cause more disc material to herniate and can cause, can cause her to become a category two or three or four or five where, where now she is having difficulty walking. So the most important thing that we can be doing is strictly resting her. Quite frankly, even more important than the medicine would be strictly resting her. I'll call you in a week to see how she's doing and then we'll call in a month to see how she's doing. If at any point she's not doing well, I want you to call us so that we can see her back. Oh, I definitely will. I really appreciate all of your information and all your time. You're very welcome. Give me maybe 10 minutes to get these medications together for you, and then we'll get her on up. Okay. Um, so scary. Hello. 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 Hello.
the bladder watch. So this low head carriage. No crying, screaming, anything like that. It's not the same thing. I agree. I think it's his neck that hurts. Um, oh, wait, watch your box. Yes, sir. Hello. 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 She's contributing to the... Oh man, 100 grand. Making our hearts happy. <laughs> Today at the bank, an old lady asked me to help check her balance, so I pushed her over. <laughs> when I was in college, I used to live on a houseboat and started dating the girl next door. Eventually, we drifted apart. So this is Celeste. She has a problem with her left facial nerve. The facial nerve is responsible for um, muscles of facial expression or moving the face and things like pricking the ears up, things like smiling, should we, should we just move? <laughs> so this is Celeste, she uh, is presenting for left facial nerve paralysis. Her owner noticed that the left eye was a little red and noticed that the face was drooping. So if we look here, we can see her, her lip here on the left side is drooping whereas the right side is more pulled back. The facial nerve is responsible for muscles of facial expression, so sort of moving the ear around, lifting the eyebrows, closing the eyelids, uh, pulling the, the jowls back. So when we have facial nerve paralysis, the thing that we notice is there's no blinking on the left side, whereas on the right side she does. You can get the sense that she still can pull the eye back and that third eyelid will come up, but even if I touch, the skin next to her eye, she's not able to blink there, but she is able to blink on this side. Um, she's still able to feel her face, so it's not that she can't feel it, it's that she can't move it. Causes of facial nerve paralysis, the most common thing that we see is idiopathic facial nerve paralysis. Um, in French Bulldogs, we worry a lot about uh, deep ear infections, so middle and inner ear infections. That's what our, our working diagnosis is for her. Um, but we can see other things that are more sinister, things like infections, uh, encephalitis, meningitis, tumors, things like that. So she's gonna get an MRI for us to find out what the underlying cause is so that we can know the best way to treat her. Ivana! She's so How's she doing? Uh, she's doing great. No real changes. <laughs> Here for her recheck side is our. This is number 11. Look at that. Are you almost done? How many rounds do you typically do? 16. You... As long as they've done well through those 16, I'll stop. But... Hello? Hello. Hey. Uh, take a peek in the brain. It looks okay. like. Looks a little squishy up there already. Thank you. You're welcome. Dogs with neck pain. Most of the time it's classic stuff. Common causes of neck pain are things like slip discs, meningitis, tumors, discospondylitis, trauma, malformations like AA instability. A little bit of a worry for occasionally dogs with intracranial disease. So a large tumor in the brain can sometimes cause neck pain is the main clinical sign. So far, again, we just have the first sagittal image, but the spinal cord, the discs all look really good. There's a little bit of hyperintensity within the spinal cord here, but when I start to see um, a syrinx or pre-syrinx or hyperintensity within the cord, I kind of look towards the brain um, to see is there anything upstream. The cerebellum here just to me looks a little bit, it should be nice and round, but it looks like it's sort of compressed at the rostral aspect and maybe a little bit of frame and magnum herniation. So I'm concerned that we're going to find something in the brain, so I've just asked them to take a look. What's up? Hi, Dear. Hey. Um, what do you say? Hi, Dear. <laughs> oh, I thought you said hi, Dear. I'm like, cool. No. <laughs> She's officially comfortable with me. I love it. <laughs> oh my god, no, I would have a meltdown. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. Someone called me bro the other day. Oh, really? Oh. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I call Dr. Kornberg dude all the time. Yeah. I'm like, dude, stop. <laughs>
hepatitis meeting in China. I still need to look at the post contrast to see was there any meningeal enhancement. Nothing on the examination suggests that there's any sort of intracranial involvement, but usually a dog that I see otitis media will also do a CSF analysis to ensure that there is not also any sort of regional meningitis. Five. It's riveting. Is he going to get the six or not? <laughs> the suspense is built. I know. <laughs> Five nucleated cells per microliter. I mean, the reality is if I had gotten to six, it wouldn't have drastically changed, mm -hmm. changed, changed our interpretation of things. So. so good for puppy. Looks like it's otitis media interna. Most common thing that we see in French bulldogs causing facial nerve paralysis, or at least in my opinion. The plan right now would be systemic antibiotics. Sometimes just the infection is so deep in the bulla and gets into the bone that the Systemic antibiotics don't clear it, so sometimes these dogs need a total ear canal ablation and uh, bulla osteotomy, so, so surgery to remove the ear canal and remove the infection from there. But that will be, let's say, a last case or a, a you know, worst case scenario. It, but we'll try medications first. Better than the other differentials, though? Yeah, totally. I mean, other than this being idiopathic, um, much better than it being meningitis, encephalitis, tumor, stroke, anything else in the year. So.